Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, um, just for the purposes of the record, Mr. Speaker, I just want to clarify a few things. You are, you are Summon. now summoned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For the purpose of the record, Mr. I need to clarify a few things. Mr. Speaker, because, you know, um, the leader of the opposition says a lot of things, and his, his surrogates repeat these things, particularly on social media. And some people believe it, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the leader of the opposition, when the United Workers Party lost government, there was no Delta variant in COVID. The deaths began after the Delta variant. Before July 2021, there was no Delta variant. The deaths in the world increased after the Delta variant was found. Point number one, Mr. Speaker. Point number two, Mr. Speaker. This government had absolutely no reserves when, dealt, when COVID hit us. This Minister of Finance, he run the country with deficits on the primary account. This is the economy he managed. Any student of economics will tell you, you cannot run a country with a deficit on the primary account. That means he did not have enough money to pay his salaries and his loan interest. That's the economy he managed. That was before COVID. Talk about managing the economy, Mr. Speaker. That was before COVID. So when COVID hit, the country had absolutely no resources. So he had to go to the NIC to amend the laws of the NIC to borrow money for income support. That's the economy he managed. Every other island gave some form of income support without going to the NIC. But he had no money. He had squandered the resources of the country. So we had to go to the NIC, and this government has pledged at some point to repay the workers of this country the money that he took from them. So, so when, we, when he gets the posturing about evidence, and grand charging and trying to play to the gallery because he thinks he's superior, Mr. Speaker. We can't allow that to continue. Secondly, Mr. Speaker, he comes and he again misleads the house. The march we had, the march that the party had, we got permission from the Ministry of Health. There was written permission. The chief medical officer gave us permission to march. And there is absolutely no evidence that says after the match there was any increase in the spread of COVID. No evidence that related to the match with the speaker. But as usual, that's what he does. He comes and he postures and believes he can fool people. That nonsense, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we talk about COVID. After COVID, St. Lucia had the greatest level of GDP contraction, the sixth in the world. That's the economy he managed. The sixth, and I want to, this is on the record. St. Lucia had the sixth highest decline in the economy in the world. That's the economy he managed. He, you know why? Because he made no provision in the better days. He used the money to do all kind of election projects. He gave, he gave out a thousand acres of land at one dollar per acre. That's what he did. So that contraction caused by COVID and by his mismanagement. These are facts, Mr. Speaker. He mismanaged the economy to point that when we got into government, after he borrowed $302 million for COVID, this government, we only had $15 million of borrowed funds to use to run this country. That, these are the facts, Mr. Speaker. These are the facts, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, this leader of the opposition, he kept the Millennium, the new hospital, closed. After when he, came, when he came into government, he, he found a transition committee led by Dr. Stephen King with 
all the plans in place to open the hospital. He kept it closed. We had help from the French government. There, were, there was equipment from the French, from the Europeans with the speaker, to open this hospital. He kept it closed. And you know, you, you know what he did? He put the country through a debt, which we have to come back to this honorable house next week. A debt of $15 million to pay people to open that hospital. And you know what happened? Local people, led by Dr. King, opened that hospital, Dr. King and Mr. Charles. That's what he did. Mr. Speaker, that's what he did, Mr. Speaker. So, when he comes talking about evidence and grand charges, and believe he's some superior being that has to come and talk down to Tobias and Mr. Speaker, never, it can't happen. The facts are against him, because he's a failed prime minister. So, Mr. Speaker, you know, you come in, into this honorable house, and you come believing that many understand that the country is greater than the politics. You come and you believe that many understand that the democratic process has worked and the people have chosen their governments. That's what you think. But Mr. Speaker, the arrogance and the conceit and the superiority complex remains. So he can't understand that the people have rejected him. He can't understand, but you have to understand it again because the people will reject him again. So, Mr. Speaker, I want to ask members to support this, this, this motion, Mr. Speaker, because this motion is about the health of the country. And Mr. Speaker, look at how this government operates. All the constituency of Miku is where one of the best health, health, health and wellness centers exist in, in the country. And what we've done, since we've got the government, we haven't diminished it. Mr. Speaker, you know there is evidence, there is evidence, Mr. Speaker, that this government, when it came into power, into government, they found a project in the World Bank to for retaining structures in Enchipo. The project had been approved by the World Bank, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, you know because I was parliamentary representative for Cassius East, and in their haste, and in their belief that they can get me to lose a seat, you know they wrote the World Bank, and the evidence available, and they transferred the, the money that was available for the retaining structures. And if you go down, Mr. Speaker, you see the, the area is in a precarious position because of the rivers. You know, Mr. Speaker, they wrote the World Bank to trust them to change the project and take it away from Kashi's East and put it in Kashi's office. That's what these guys did. That's the government you run. The health center in Larisos. Mr. Speaker, he cannot deny these things. That's why he has to grant charge. That's why he has to grant charge, Mr. Speaker. But he will never be able to come and shut anybody down. That's why he has to come and grant charge, Mr. Speaker. So the medical, the wellness center in Miku, we've kept it going. We haven't closed it. We've kept it going, Mr. Speaker. This government is on record as doing more for opposition constituencies, and some of my colleagues quarrel with me about that, Mr. Speaker. We haven't stopped anything happening in opposition constituencies. We've won health centers being built in Shozel. Shozel probably have more health centers per capita than anywhere in the world. <laughs> <coughs> we continued. We never stopped any of them. We continued, Mr. Speaker. We continued. He built the road, $15 million. And he, and he comes and says, anyway, Mr. Speaker, the problem with this, leader, with, with this leader of the opposition is he believes that he can lie. And he can lie, and people must believe he lied because he said it. He spent $15 million, direct award, to build a road in Viewfort, Viewfort South. $15 million. Mr. Speaker, you know, an independent study that we not says 
that that road was built for the SH? Yes. That's what the study says, not me say it. Any position we've taken, Mr. Speaker, is based on evidence from other people. Not us. I love you, Mr. Speaker. But you know, the problem, Mr. Speaker, is that lies and mistruths and misinformation is what he is the party that he leads. That's what he's all about, Mr. Speaker. But Mr. Speaker, the time, the time is there. And the same way, the people of St. Lucia rejected these lies on the 26th of July. The people of St. Lucia will reject these lies again. Come and talk about crime. Mr. Speaker, this leader of the opposition, Mr. Prime Minister, the, the vote for training for the police was zero. You know how he gave the police equipment? By having dinners. Dressing people in yellow and, and then go to dinner and say they have modeling. Fellas that never modeled in their life and people modeling. And that's how the money they use to give police equipment, Mr. Speaker. Tokenize at zero. Tokenism. That's what he did for training for the police. What have we done? We've spoken to our partners. We've spoken to the French. We've spoken to the Taiwanese. We've spoken to the Americans. We have a security pact with the French, Mr. Speaker, to help us in our fight against crime. Yeah. When he was in government, on one weekend, there were free murders. We never blamed him. So they come and they pretend as if this crime thing is something that you must blame the Labour Party for. Yeah. I must blame the government for, Mr. Speaker. We have never... We've come in this honorable house and we've said, let's get it just like COVID. When we just COVID, we came and we said, in fact, they used to laugh at me for wearing my mask. They slapped him and laughed at me, kaka, ka, ka, I wear my mask. So, Mr. Speaker, when you see he comes and he grand charges crime, we, what this you know, leader of the opposition, when there was a symposium for crime that the Minister for National Security, whatever he was, held at infrastructure. He went to Jamaica to campaign. He never attended it. I talk about caring about crime. Talking about caring about crime. I was there. I was little the person I went. I was there. So Mr. Speaker, when you're trying to politicize crime, you want to, you must, sit, you must ask him, what are the tangible things that he did to combat the crime situation in this country? We have said that the crime situation is too high. We've made the point. We've, we are doing work with the French on the forensic lab. We are, right now, we are working with the Jamaicans on training the police. <clears throat> Very soon, the police have already got nearly 20 vehicles, including bicycles. Just last week, we, 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 last week I signed an award to give the police 10 new bicycles. We're going to train them with Jamaicans in using motorcycles to help in the, in the fight against crime. And in the budget, you go to hear initiatives for the police, Mr. Speaker, because we believe that the only way we can combat crime is if we have a well-functioning, a well-trained, and a motivated police force, Mr. Speaker. What, the, what does he want me to see? He wants me to, he wants me to interfere in the operation of the police force? And we said that our job is to give resources to the police. Our job is to give, not to interfere in who is a corporal, who is a sergeant. Not like what he did. Mr. Speaker, we took the revolutionary step and we had confidence in a career police officer, a woman, and we made a commission of the police. Because we had confidence in the women of this country. And we had confidence that within the police high command, there were men and women who were capable of doing the job if they were allowed to do the job properly, Mr. Speaker. So that's the difference between us and them. That's the difference. The difference between us and them is we do not call police officers and, and tell them how to do their job. That's the difference between us and them, Mr. Speaker. So when he comes and talks about crime, no one here, no one in this honorable house, and I hope he's here also, doesn't like the crime situation in the country. But, and, and again, people are still studying whether the COVID virus, the, COVID, the impact of COVID, because you hear about mass murders all over the world. Crime in England has increased 
in a way never heard before. And it's not me. We're not the ones who did it. Listen to the news. In the United States, every other day, there's a mass killing. Every other day. So there seems to be something happening with the world as far as crime is concerned. So don't come and blame us for, 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 for crime and try to mix independence and crime. Just because independence is the time where the whole country should be united. The whole country. But here's this news. The worst independence ever. <laughs> That is that's his independence message. The worst independence. That's, that's his independence message. Mr. Speaker, you know why? Because he has not understood that the people of St. Lucia have rejected him. Yeah. And have rejected his policies. And he refuses to understand that. And unless he understands that, Mr. Speaker, he'll remain desperate, frustrated, annoyed, angry, and he'll continue to misinform the people of St. Lucia. I thank you, Mr. Speaker.